Okay, let's keep going with this. So find the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a convex 24 gon. So we have that formula for the sum of the interior angles is n minus 2 times 180. So that's in this case a 24 gon. So 24 minus 2 times 180. Or in other words, 22 times 180. Now this is not necessarily a regular 24 gon. So the um, angles aren't necessarily all the same, so we can't find the individual angles, but we can find the sum is 22 times 180, or in other words, the sum is 3960. So the sum of the measures of all those interior angles is 3960 degrees, just using that formula there. Okay, convex hexagon has interior angles with all these measures, find x. Well, hexagon, so that would be 6 minus, whoa, minus 6, 6 minus 2 times 180 is the total number of degrees here. And so we get that's 4 times 180 or 720 because that's two 360s. So we just add these up. I missed this angle and so I had to redo this problem. So that was all six of these angles added together. We end up getting 30x. I did 29x and then I just had to rewind this. So I missed this first little x up there. So we add all those up. This is the expression we get. So we get 30x equals 900. So that's x equals 30. Plugging that back in, we get uh, the measures of the angles are 30. Oh, see, that was my old answer there, which was not true. So x is 30 degrees. I'm going to list all the angles down below. So 30 degrees, 150 minus that. So that's 47 degrees. The next one is 60 plus 60, 120 degrees. The next one is uh, 210 minus 31, so that's 179. The next one is 180 minus 6, so 174. The next one is 1, no, 9 times, that's 270 minus 100, that's 170. Um, and we should, when we double check and add all these up, they should add up to uh, 720, so let's just check really quick. 170 plus 174 plus 179 plus 120 plus 47 plus 30 hit equals and sure enough we got 70 or 720 so that's just a way to double check your answer at the end to make sure it all worked out okay so find the measure of each exterior angle of a regular 2x gone okay so it has 2x number of sides and the total is 360. Now, if it wasn't regular, we wouldn't know anything, but regular means they're all the same. And so we just divide that 360 by 2x. So the answer is 360 divided by 2x, or reducing that, that's 180 over x is the measure of each of them. Okay, we don't, it's a variable, so we don't have a, a numerical answer. Just leave the variable in the answer. Okay, so find measure of angle 1 in the parallelogram, A, B, C, D. Okay, well, we do know this is 31 right here, so that means alternate interior. This is 31 degrees. We could solve for all the inside angles. This is 90. Whoa, that's too thick. That's a 96 right here. We also know the supplementary linear pair there is 84 degrees, and this is 84 degrees. And then we have a triangle, so we could just say, well, let's triangle sums to 180. And so that's 110, 115 so far. So this leaves us over with 65, which would also make this 65. We don't have a way to get these two angles um, unless we had some other information about the triangle. But it was just asking for the measure of angle 1, so it's 65 degrees. Okay. ABCD is a parallelogram with diagonals um, that intersect each other at E. Okay, so we need to draw a picture. Uh, it's actually pretty much that picture in the problem before if we label the middle E, but let's just draw it separate. Okay, so A, B, C, D. We put those in order and they intersect at E. Okay, if AE is x squared and EC is 6x minus 8, then find all possible values. So we know in a parallelogram diagonals bisect, so these are equal. So we know that x squared equals 6x minus 8. This is a quadratic, so we move everything to one side. x squared minus 6x plus 8 equals 0. We use our x-box method here. So 
a times c is a positive 8 on top. The middle term is a negative 6. Our box, we put the first and last terms in there, so the uh, x squared and the positive 8. And now we just need to find what two numbers there. Well, two numbers that multiply to make a positive must have the same signs. And if they add to make a negative, then we know both are negative. The two things that multiply to make 8 and add to 6 are 2 and 4. So negative 2 and negative 4. So that negative 6x in the middle was actually a minus 2x and a minus 4x before we combined like terms. And then we just do the GCF. So the GCF of each row is this is an x. And we keep the sign. So we have a negative 2 in that first um, because we keep the sign of the top box. So we get a negative 2. On the left, we have a common GCF of x. And we keep the sign. So negative 4. Just double check that all those multiply. Yes. Yes. And so just double checking. And so we have x minus 4 times x minus 2 equals 0. So either x minus 4 equals 0 or x minus 2 equals 0. So x is 4 or x is 2. We go back over here and double check that those are positive sides. If I plug in 2, I get 12 minus 8 is 4 and 4. If I plug in 4, I get 16 and 24 minus 8, which is 16. So both of them give positive side lengths. So both are valid answers. So both x equals 2 and x equals 4 are valid. Okay, determine whether the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Justify your answer. This is really quick. Yes. Diagonals bisect each other. So that's implying both diagonals are bisected by both diagonals. Okay. And so parallelogram. That's one of our um, theorems. One of our ways to prove that something is a parallelogram is if the diagonals bisect each other. So yes. Um, given the slope of AB is two thirds and the slope of BC is negative two, find the slopes of CD and DA so that ABCD will be a parallelogram. Okay. So let's look at a picture. We have A, B, remember it's saying A, B, C, D will be a parallelogram, A, B, C, D. And it's saying we have the slope of A, B. So this slope up top is M equals two thirds. And it's saying we have the slope of B, C is M equals negative two. It's saying find the slopes of C, D and D, A. So it'll be a parallelogram. Oh, it's literally just opposite sides have to have the same slopes. So DC has to have, or CD has to have a slope of two thirds and DA has to have the same slope as BC. So it has to have a slope of negative two, right? So that was it. So um, slope CD is two thirds, slope uh, DA is negative two. That was a silly question. They gave it to us, okay. In this rectangle, find measure of angle one. Okay, so in a rectangle, remember we have the symmetry like this is one way to remember um, a rectangle. But another way is you could just say alternate interior angles and so on and so forth. But I just know that these are the same. Another reason for that is uh, diagonals bisect because it's a parallelogram. But diagonals are congruent in a rectangle. So when they're split, they're actually all equal to each other. So this is an isosceles triangle. So these two angles are the same. So whether you remember it by uh, symmetry or the diagonals being congruent and bisected means isosceles triangle. Either way, you end up getting 2x plus 10 equals 3x minus 16, or x is left over on the right, positive 1x, and 26 on the left. So plugging that back in, it should work. We get 52 plus 10, that's 62. And down here we get three of those, so that's 60 and 18, so 78 minus 16, which is also 62. So this was a 62 degree, this was a 62 degree. A rectangle has all right angles, so we just subtract from the 62, or 62 from the 90, and we get this must be 28 degrees. So measure of angle one, 28 degrees. Okay, and that's all it was asking for? Yep. Okay, the diagonals of rhombus A, B, C, D intersect. Oh, yeah, let's draw this. Okay, so we have rhombus 
A, B, C, D, and they intersect at E. Remember what you know about uh, rhombus is the diagonals bisect and all the sides are congruent. Those are the, I mean, diagonals are perpendicular and all the sides are congruent. Other than that, it's just all the properties of a parallelogram. Okay, so in this case, it says B, A, E is two thirds of A, B, E. So let's call A, B, E X. Okay, so this is X. And then um, B, A, E is two thirds of X. So this is two thirds of X. Okay, well, what's the relationship here? The relationship is you have a right triangle. So this angle plus this angle adds up to 90 because you already have 90 of the degrees here and a triangle adds up to 180. So we have 2 thirds X plus X equals 90 degrees and it's saying find the measure of some other angle. So we'll find that later. Okay, so that's plus 3 thirds. So that's a total of 5 thirds X equals 90. So we divide both sides by 5 thirds and we get x equals 90 divided by 5 thirds, which is the same as 90 times 3 fifths, or um, that cancels with that and we get 18, so we get 18 times 3, or what's that, 30 and so 54 degrees. Okay, so x is 54, so going back to this picture in a different color, um, we have this is 54 degrees, 2 thirds of 54 is cancel cancel uh, that's 18 and 1 so two of those that's 36 and sure enough that does add up to 90 okay and then we have symmetry so the symmetry are along these diagonal lines uh, or you could remember other properties but that means this is a 54 this is a 36 and then angle bisectors uh, diagonals or angle bisectors or just symmetry and so you get um, this is what all the angles are and then it's saying find B, C, D. So find this whole angle. So that's 72 degrees. Good stuff. The diagonals of square A, B, C, D intersect. Okay, so we have a square. Uh, let's do it in a different color. Let's do it in orange. Okay, so we have square A, B, C, D. So it is all the rectangle and um, rhombus properties. So here's E. So diagonals are perpendicular, diagonals are congruent and bisected. That's from a rectangle and a parallelogram. So these are all the same. Uh, we have right angles at the corners because of rectangle. We have all the sides are congruent because of rhombus. So whoo we look at all that. And all, angle bisectors. So these are all actually 45, 45, 90 triangles everywhere in this. Okay, anyways. If AE is 2, so this is 2 right here, find the perimeter. So if that's 2, we could go, well, that top triangle is similar to a 45, 45, 90, 1, 1, root 2. And we could say from this triangle, this triangle, we times by 2. So that means this side is 2 root 2. And that means every side of the square is 2 root 2. And so you add up the perimeter and two root twos plus two plus two plus two is eight root twos, or you can multiply by four. So we get eight root twos as the perimeter there. Cool. Okay, next one. Let's change colors again. Color purple. Okay. Find AE and isosceles trapezoid. So what do we know in isosceles trapezoid? We know the legs are congruent. We know the base angles are congruent. So if we have a 60 degrees here, that means this is 60 degrees. We know the top angles are the same, so 90 and 90, these sides being parallel, consecutive interior, that means this is also 90 and this is 90, so we have a rectangle there. Um, in this triangle on the side, it's a 30, 60, 90, and this is a, whoa, this is a 30, 60, 90. Okay, so that's what we got. So we know this is an 8 over here. We could do 30, 60, 90 to find all those sides, so let's do it. That's similar to a 30, 60, 90, where short side, medium side, long side. And so easy multiple, we multiplied by four. So we know that, I don't know, let's go green. We know that this is four times root three, and this is four times one. So that means this is four times one and four times root three. We don't have enough information to get these two sides, but let's see what it's asking for. It says find AE. Oh. That was easy, AE4. Okay, let's go to the next one. Oh, last one on this page. K 
Okay, find points G, or no, points G and H are midpoints. So point G and H are midpoints of A, F, and D, okay, in regular hexagon, blah, 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 blah. If A, B is 6, find G, H. Okay, so a couple things. Regular hexagon, okay. Uh, we're going to, yeah, let's do it lots of ways. First, let's find an angle, okay. We could do that because it's regular. So, the sum is n minus 2 times 180. So in a hexagon, 6 minus 2 times 180. So that's 4 times 180. Or in other words, it's... Hmm, just double checking something up there. Uh, that was a hexagon earlier. Yeah, we already did hexagon. So uh, anyways, we get this is 720 degrees. Okay, and it's regular. <clears throat> so six angles, we take the 720. We divide it by 6, and we go 120 degrees is each angle. Again, we can only do that in regular because all six angles are the same. So we know every single one of these angles is 120. Okay. Well, what we want, though, is this mid-segment. But it's not a mid-segment of a trap, or I mean, of a hexagon. But it does, if we cut it this way, it could be the mid-segment of this trapezoid, that's what GH could be, and that's how we're going to find the length. So we connect A to D, right? And this is a regular shape, so it's symmetrical. So we split that um, 120 into 60 and 60 and 60 and 60 because that's the whole idea of a regular shape is it's got all this crazy symmetry. Oh my goodness, let's just erase that 160 and do that again. Okay, so we cut that line across, and there we go. Well, now... Just by consecutive interior angles, we know that's parallel, okay? So we know this is parallel to this. We have a trapezoid. So all we do is find the mid-segment there. Well, what are these lengths, though? That's the hard part. And so let's label. So we know all these are six. Oh, shoot, but we don't know that bottom base, okay? And I'm actually not going to label a six. I'm going to label this as a three and a three and a three and a three. Now, we have no way to find this uh, middle segment, or do we? Look at this trick. Look at this trick connect the center to this. And what is a regular hexagon made out of? If we have a regular hexagon, useful thing is cut it up, right? We know that this is all symmetrical. So we cut every 120 into 60 and 60, or we cut the 360 into six equal angles, 360 divided by six, each of these is 60. And so look at what a regular hexagon is always made out of. Oh yeah, equilateral triangles. That's a useful thing that comes up. And so we know that each of these is 6, 6, 6, 6. So what's that total base there? That total base is 12. And so now the mid-segment GH there is just the average. So GH is equal to the average of the two bases because it's the median or mid-segment of a trapezoid. So it's one half, whoa, six plus 12. So it's one half, 18 or nine. Cool problem, I like it. So GH equals nine. All right, let's keep going. All right, let's do this. So if the vertices of trapezoid ABCD are blank, then find the length of the median. So we could go ahead and graph, but what it's really saying is, and I'm just going to draw it like this, okay? We have A, B, C, D, and we want to find the length of the median. we got two options, okay? So the median is going to be between the two parallel sides. So once we find the two parallel sides, I'm not assuming it's A, B, and C, D, we could either find the midpoint of the two legs, that's find midpoint, find midpoint, and then distance formula, distance between them, or we could find distance formula of parallel sides and then find average of them okay oh cool all right so let's actually graph this out and see really quick so on the coordinate plane we go to 10 negative 1 we go to 6 6 that's a that's b we go to negative 8 negative 1 here now oh those are along the same line that's nice c and then we have b no we already did b d is negative 2 6 okay so a b c d they put the order of that wrong a to b to c to d that's a that's a 
not even a trapezoid. That's not even a polygon. So they must have said the wrong order there. Um, just double checking. C is negative 8. 10 is, so it should have been A, B, D, C. Otherwise, this is not a polygon. So order matters here. That was just a little typo on their part. So looking at this, we know the two parallel sides here are the horizontal sides with the negative 1 and the horizontal sides with the 6. So I'm going to, instead of midpoint, midpoint, find distance, nah, whatever. It doesn't matter either way. But I'm just going to find the length of the two bases. So I'm going to zoom in here. So between the top one, between negative 2 and 6, that top base is 8. And between negative 8 and 10, the bottom base is 18. So the length of the mid-segment is 8 plus 18 divided by 2 because it's the average of the two. And so that different that is 26 divided by 2 or 13. We could have also found the midpoints of the two sides. So just to double check, I'll do that. So the midpoint of C and D so the average point between those two is we add the two up, we get negative 10 divided by 2. We add the two y's, we get 5 divided by 2. So we get an x value of negative 5 and a y value of 2.5. Okay, the average of these other two over here would be add the x's, 16 over 2, add the y's, 5 over 2. So we get 8, comma. 2.5. So they have the same y value because they're parallel to these two bases. So we knew it would. So the median is parallel to those. And now we're going from a negative 5 to an 8. That's also 13. So just a way to double check. Okay, a parallelogram has three vertices. Um, find possible coordinates of the fourth. Oh, this is going to have multiple answers. So here's 0, 0. Um, let's put B, C, assuming B and C are positive. We don't have to, but I'm just for graphing sakes. Um, and then we have D comma zero. So that's somewhere over here, D comma zero. All right. Well, uh, we have different cases here, but if this is a parallelogram, basically we could put this point over here. Gosh, it would probably change if these were negative or not. So, or which one's greater than which. Let's just assume they're all positive numbers. And so this one over here, we went... Man, how, how could we do this without assuming positive and negative? This is going to be lots of cases. Okay, so one possibility, right, is we went over B and up C. And so to get to this other point, we do the same thing. And so this point is D plus B comma C. So that would for sure make a parallelogram. Okay, so one point is D plus B comma c that's one point all right let's erase that maybe in a separate color to do it all right so now with these other points we could say okay well how did we get to um so that was if we were looking for this point let's say we're looking for this point okay so how did we go this way we went oh, i'm gonna do a different color we went back um whatever so we went from d to b so we went back D minus B, that's how far we went negative, or we're now at the point B minus D, okay? And then we're now going up to C, so we went up C. So we're going to go back here. How much? We're going to go back, so this is a B minus D, comma, and then we went up C, okay? So that's if we were looking for this point, okay? So that'd be b minus d comma c all right well let's look for even another point now there's i'm assuming they only gave one answer here but just double checking if this was five zero and this was seven six or let's do a smaller number let's say it was three six we went back to that's that and so we went to negative two so that would be yeah, that was right. Okay, I was just double checking whether my positives and negatives added up there. All right, so now let's look even for a different coordinate. Let's say instead we're looking at this shape and we want to find this one. So we'd say, okay, from here we went, um, we went down C and then we went forward. How much? So from B we added 
d minus b, right? That's how you got to literally the b and the minus b cancel out and you're left with d. And so that's, so we went this far forward. And so we do the same thing from here and we just say, okay, well, we go forward d, whoops, d minus b, and then we go down c. Okay, so d minus b negative c. Um, d minus b comma negative c. And we could probably even do like the negative of this, negative d minus b comma negative c, because all this, all this is is negative the first, negative the second. So minus d minus b minus c. Would that give us a point? I'm curious. That would be a point over here. Why would that give us? Well, I don't know if that. So that's a good question. I wonder if that gives us a quadrilateral. Well, a question for another time. Cool problem. Determine whether this is a rectangle given these points. So we have so many things to determine it's a rectangle. Uh, I think the most elegant to determine if it's a rectangle might be, is it a parallelogram? And then is one set pair of sides perpendicular? Then parallelogram with right angle, the whole thing's a rectangle. Or we could do, is it a parallelogram with congruent diagonal? So if we had the length of the diagonals, we could do that. Uh, and a nice, easy way to check if something's a parallelogram with a graph. Again, like we have all these different tests. So you could say, are these parallel? And are these parallel? That's one. Or are these lengths the same? And these lengths the same? Then it's a parallelogram. Or another way is if the diagonals bisect each other, then it's a parallelogram. Or in other words, if the midpoint of this is the same thing as the midpoint of this, then they intersect at the midpoint of both, so they bisect one another, so it's a parallelogram. So that's a that's a fun way to do it. So we could do it in any way here. Let's graph it and see if one way lends itself the most. Okay, so we have negative 2, negative 2, negative 6, 6, uh, 6, 2, and 2, 10. Okay, so it looks something like this. Okay, we got 2, 10. We got 6, 2, we got negative 2, negative 2, and negative 6, comma, 6. And this was C, D, A, B. And the order was right this time. All right, so is this a rectangle? Well, let's do it maybe by slopes then, okay? So slopes are, uh, we went over 8 and up 4. So the slope of this one is rise over run. That's positive 4 over 8, or 1 over 2. The slope of this one on the left is down 8 and forward. Um, from negative 6 to negative 2 is 4. So the slope of this one is negative 8 over 4, or negative 2. Hey, that's a perpendicular slope. So we already have a right angle. If we just get the other two are the same slopes, we're done. And again, there's multiple ways to do this. Um, I'll switch colors because I had the green on the uh, one up above. So from 6 up, I went up 4 to get to 10. And then I went from negative 6 to 2, which is plus 8. So that slope is positive rise over positive run, or that's 1 half. Check. Things are looking good. Last one, I went from um, 10 to 2. Oh, I'm going. So I went positive 4 forward. I was doing wise. And then down um, 8. And so that slope would be rise over run. So negative 8 over positive 4. And so that's equal to negative 2. And sure enough, opposite sides have the same slopes. So it's a parallelogram, both pairs. And one pair is perpendicular, negative 2 to positive 1 half. Or all of them are perpendicular. And so we have a rectangle, OK? So rectangle, and that was in really two steps. One, both pair opposite sides parallel, so parallelogram. And um, the consecutive or adjacent sides perpendicular. And we know one right angle is enough, even though we had more, but one right angle that in a parallelogram, then four right angles. So it's a rectangle. 
Okay. Uh, let's look at this one. Use the distance formula to determine whether this parallelogram or whether this is a parallelogram. Okay. Woo, this is just going to be a lot of work. All right. Let's see if we have some room. Let's do it right here. Okay. I'm going to switch colors, actually. Let's go to purple. All right. We have A is positive 1, 6. B is 7, 6. Oh, that's nice. They give us a horizontal. And then 2, negative 3. That's C. And then D is negative 4, negative 3. Oh, a horizontal. That's nice. Negative 4, negative 3, D. And so A to B to C to D. So we can just count. This is a length of 6. We can count. This is a length of 6. Now we just need to use the distance formula twice. Um, really, we can just do it once if they're the same triangles. So this one is up 9 from negative 3 to 6. And over uh, from negative 4 to 1, that's 5. And so we have a 5, 9 right triangle. And we'll have to solve for that side. So that's 5 squared plus 9 squared equals c squared. So that's 25 plus 81 equals c squared. So that's 106 equals c squared. So this is square root of 106, which I don't think simplifies. That'd be 2 times 53. And I think 53 is prime. Yeah, okay. So that can't be simplified. So we just get square root of 106. And over here, we go down 9, and we go back 5. And so we get the exact same triangle with the exact same values. And when we do the same Pythagorean theorem, we get this is a square root of 106. And the question is, is it a um, parallelogram? And the answer is yes. And it is both pairs opposite sides are congruent. That's why. Okay. Name the missing coordinates for A, B, C, D. Um, then determine the relationship between A, C, and the segment formed by connecting the midpoints. So it doesn't say it's a parallelogram or rhombus. So all we know for C is that we have comma zero because it's on this axis. Now, I'm assuming they wanted this to be a rhombus or a parallelogram, but it doesn't tell us that. But we then determine the relationship between AC and the segment formed by connecting the midpoints of BC and AB. So if we connect AB's midpoint to the midpoint of BC, well, that's a triangle. So we know this is half the length of AC just by the mid, uh, mid segment theorem. So then determine the relationship between A to C and the segment. So we don't have the value here yet, but I do know that um, AC is two times the length of, and then it's the segment connecting midpoints, midpoints of BC and AB, and they're parallel, right? That's triangle mid-segment theorem. So I think they left out the words that this was parallelogram or something. So for C, all you could get is the point um, question mark, comma, zero. And it doesn't really matter what that point is. This relationship on the bottom is still true because in any triangle, if you connect the midpoints of two sides, then you actually get it's parallel to the third side and it's half its length. Uh, cool stuff. Okay. For questions 18 and 19, complete the two-column proof by supplying the missing. So we have a parallelogram where uh, B, Q, oh, A, B, C, D, so the outside thing is a parallelogram, and B, Q is congruent to D, S, and 
PA is congruent to RC. And so what we're trying to do is show that PQRS is a parallelogram. Oh, okay. Yeah, we could do that. All right, so in this one it's saying AD is congruent to CB. Well, that's because opposite sides, well, we could write both pairs. So both pairs of opposite sides of parallelogram are congruent, okay? I don't know if that's got a fancy theorem number, but that's the reason. Okay, and PA is that, that's given. Segment subtraction property. I mean, I guess that's a thing. So they're just doing the segment addition um, and skipping the algebra, but they're just saying you could take the whole segment minus this piece and you get the other piece must be congruent. Okay, and then we have opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. That's the reason we just use it there to get the sides are congruent. And then they say, well, if the sides are congruent and this piece is, then we just subtract. And so that they end up getting the uh, same thing they did there. They combine these two and get those other lengths are congruent. So what they're working towards is they're going, okay, well, then we know these two match. And we know 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3, 4 match. Okay, then it says, uh, and angles opposite from one another are congruent. So angle A is congruent to C, and this angle um, D oops, is congruent to this angle down here. Okay, so you see what they're working at now? So then we're going to have two pairs of congruent triangles. This triangle is congruent to this one by SAS. And totally separately, this triangle is congruent to this one by SSS, okay? So, or I mean, I said SSS, I meant SAS. So we have, okay, then those two triangles are congruent by SAS. Then by CPCTC, their um, hypotenuse-looking thing, the other third side is congruent. So what they get, and I'll just use one, like this, I'm in pink. I'll reuse the one marker. So this one is congruent to this one by CPCTC. And this one is congruent to this one by CPCTC. And then we know it's a parallelogram because if both pairs opposite sides of quadrilateral are congruent, then parallelogram, right? That was one of the tests that was enough to know it's a parallelogram was that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. Okay, so in isosceles trapezoid ABCD, then we have AE, so this piece, um, and EC, this piece, and then we have BD equals this other thing. So in an isosceles trapezoid, the diagonals do not bisect each other, but they are congruent. So we know that AE plus EC is the whole diagonal, and then that's equal to the other diagonal BD. That's the idea there, is diagonals are congruent, okay? Diagonals do not bisect. If they bisected, this isosceles trapezoid would be a rectangle. It wouldn't be an isosceles trapezoid anymore. All right, because if the diagonals did bisect, it would be a parallelogram, right? And then a parallelogram with congruent diagonals would be a rectangle. That's just to reason it out. So AE, it's 2x plus 5, plus EC, 3x minus 12, equals BD, which is 4x plus 20. And so off to the side here where we have a little more room, that's 5x minus 7 equals 4x plus 20. So that's 1x equals 27. So x equals 27. And we should just plug it in just to double check. So if it's 27, this is 108 plus 20. So this whole diagonal here is 128. And then the other one, we plug it in, we go, well, 327s. Um, yeah, 327, that's 60 and 21, that's 81 minus 12, so that's 71, 69 for this part. And then the other part would be 54 plus 5, so that'd be 59 here. 59, 69 is 128, so that checks out. All right, so if three interior angles of a convex hexagon each measure 104, a fourth angle measures 84, and the measure of the fifth is three times the measure of the sixth. Find the measure of the sixth. Well, we know that all three of them add up to six minus two times 180. That's right, the number of sides 
minus 2 times 180. And so we just go, well, that's equal to the sum of um, three of them measure 140. So 140 plus 140 plus 140. A fourth angle is 84. And then the fifth angle is three times as much. So three times some x as the sixth angle. So the sixth angle is x. The fifth angle is three times it. And then we have the other four angles. So we just go ahead and solve. So uh, 4 times 180, that's two 360s or 720, equals uh, what? We'll just add them up in pieces. 280 plus 224 plus 4x. Okay, so we go 4x equals 720 minus, and then what's this? That's uh, 504. Right, to 400, 504. And so 4x over here, 4x equals, that's 216. And so x equals 50 and 4, so 54. And what is it asking for? Find the measure of the sixth angle of the sixth angle. So the sixth angle was the 1x. So yeah, it was x equals 54 degrees. Okay. Oh, and we're at chapter 10 already. So let's just keep going because this was a short chapter 8. So find BC. Well, we know both of these radiuses are the same. And so that makes this an isosceles right triangle, or 45, 45, 90, similar to a 1, 1, root 2. And so that means that we simply multiply this triangle by 3. And so this is 3, root 2. Oh, that was a nice, easy one. 3, root 2. All right, find the circumference of P to the nearest hundredth, okay? So we have, again, an isosceles triangle. We know the inscribed angle of a 180-degree arc is half of it, so that's 90. Or you could remember an inscribed angle of a semicircle as a right angle. And so that means, oh, and we already had this was 92. And so that was 6, this was 6, this was 6. So we have this is a, um, we have this as a square, right? Because opposite sides are the same, so it's a parallelogram and it's a rhombus and if we have one right angle then we could go well then this is 180 so the other one's a right angle 180 this is a right angle so we get this is a square right that means this is 45 45 45 45 so that means that's similar to a 1 1 root 2 that means we just multiplied by 6 so this diameter is 6 root 2. it says find the circumference well, the circumference is just pi times diameter. So it's pi times 6 root 2. So we could rewrite that as 6 pi root 2. The order doesn't matter. We just do the root 2 last, so there's no ambiguity of where the square root ends. That's all. Um, and you could approximate that too, right? This is about 1.4. That's 3, 18, 1.4. So I don't know. Maybe it's somewhere around 20, high 20s, 28 or something. All right. Let's see. So now we want to find the measure of arc. So remember, measure of arc, that's in degrees. That's like an angle kind of measure, all right? Because arc length is very different. Oh, and here's the length of an arc next, okay? So let's look at this one. Well, what could we do? Oh, man, I was having trouble zooming in there. Well, remember, this is a diameter, so we can do 180 minus 54. This angle over here is 126. Um, we know these add up to 180, so we could do x minus 6 plus 4x minus, plus 1 adds up to 180. So that's 5x minus 5 equals 180. So 5x equals 185. And so x equals, we divide that by 5 and we get 37 degrees. And then we go back over here and it says find the measure of or the xw. So of this, so we just plug that 37 back in. So 4 times 37, that's 120 and 28. That's 148 plus 1. So 149. I'm going to double check if that works out. So 37 minus 6 is 31. And sure enough, those added together make 180. So we get the measure of arc, xw. That's the same as the central angle, right? So here's the central angle is 149. So that means this arc measure is 149. And then we would have to find the length separately using like a radius and a proportion, which we'll do in this one. Let's switch colors here. Let's go to purple. If the length of an arc of measure 80 
is, so this is the 80 degrees, is 12 pi inches long, then find the radius. Well, remember, the measure of an arc, so the length of an arc like AB, is equal to the measure of the arc, right? So how many degrees it is out of 360 times the whole circumference. So let's plug some things in. So we've got the length of the arc, that's 12 pi, is equal to an 80 degree arc out of 360. That's the fraction of the circle. And the circumference is 2 pi r. So now we just need to solve for 2 pi r. So I'm going to divide both sides by six, or 2 pi. So I get 6 equals, I'm going to simplify this fraction times r. So that fraction, let's see, we'll get rid of the 80, or I mean the zeros, the 10. So we have 8 over 36. Could we do that even more? So 8 over 36 divided by 4 becomes 2 over 9. Okay, so this is 2, well, this is 2 ninths. All right, so now I just divide both sides by 2 ninths, and I'm done. So r is 2, or 6 divided by 2 ninths. So 6, whoa. Oh yeah, let's do that. 6 over 1 divided by 2 over 9. That's 6 over 1 times 9 over 2. Or, this cancels and we get a 3. That's 27. So this was in inches. So the radius is 27 inches. Alright, so find GH. So in this one, let's switch to blue here. Uh, we see it goes through the center and forms a right angle. So we know this is congruent there. Uh, it says that's a 2. I'm assuming that 2 applies to this length here. So that would mean that out of the radius of 7, this is a 5 here. It's saying find g to h. So what we could do then is we could draw this extra segment forming a right angle. And now what we get is radius of 7, which we already knew. That was this length swung around. So we get a right triangle where this hypotenuse is 7, this leg is 5, and then we need to find this x, but then it's asking for gh, so we have to double it to get the whole gh. So x squared plus 5 squared equals 7 squared. So that's x squared plus 25 equals 49. So subtracting x squared equals 24. So x equals root 24 which simplifies to root 4 root 6, or x is 2 root 6, and then gh is twice that length, so it's 2 times 2 root 6, or 4 root 6. Okay, so this one was 4 root 6. All right, so two parallel chords, 16, centim oh, 16 centimeters and 30 centimeters long, are 23 centimeters apart find the radius of the circle. Whoa, that's a cool one. Okay, so uh, we don't, let's do it up here. Okay, so I'll just shh. So here's the circle. So a longer chord close to the center and a shorter chord here. Now, it seems like we could actually get two answers here uh, because we could always have this case where they're both on the same side of the center or we could get a case where this 30 is over here and the 16 was here. Well, that's two cases. That's to two totally different circles, maybe? Interesting. Well, anyways, so this one was 16 and 30, and they're 23 centimeters apart. So maybe this one's going to be impossible, and this one will be possible because they're pretty far apart. So we'll see. So um, we can draw that perpendicular distance to both along the radius. Um, just placing it. So that cuts these into two equal parts. That's 15, 15, uh, 8, and 8, and they're 23 apart. Or, same thing over here, we draw this distance right here. I'm going to erase that. We know they're 23 apart. That passes through the center, and that splits this one to 15, 15, 8, and 8, and these are right angles. And so if we want to find a radius, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to end up drawing the radius, right? So from the center, we got shkabang and shkabang and shkabang and shkabang. So let's put, make this distance like X here. So what that means is we have um, two right triangles. So in one, we have X plus, so I'm doing uh, the eight triangle first. We have this triangle, which is X plus 23 radius and 8. And then in the other triangle we have x uh, 15 
and r. n needs to be the same radius. So this looks like a system of equations here. So let's go ahead and set this system up. So we got 8 squared plus x plus 23 squared equals r squared. And in the other one, r squared is equal to x squared plus 15 squared. Now it looks like a quadratic, but I think they're actually going to cancel out. So we get um, 8 squared, so 64 plus, and now this one you have to multiply out, right? You have to write x plus 23 times x plus 23 and multiply it out. So we get x squared plus 23x plus 23x or 46x plus whatever 23 squared is equals x squared plus 225. And so these subtract and whoa, that's nice. Okay, so on one side we get 46x equals and on the other side we get 225 minus uh, 64 and minus 23 squared and look at this I think we're going to get a negative so this is going to be impossible right because 23 squared is going to be more than 400 so we'll get a negative answer here let's still end up solving it um, just in case but yeah let's see I got to pull out my calculator now Okay, we get uh, 225 minus 64 minus 23 squared, and then divided by 46, so it's negative 368. So negative 46x equals negative 368. So x equals negative 368 divided by 46. We get negative 8. Okay, I don't think that's going to be a negative 8 because what's going to happen is that just means this is over here. By eight. So let's do it in this um, one. We got r and x. And then on this segment over here, we have this is 23 minus x. And this is r. So let's set it up. So we had two possibilities and it worked out that one was impossible. Or if you just looked at it as negative 8, the way I drew it, that just means 8 in the other direction. So it just meant it was over here. But let's actually go ahead and solve it just to make sure. All right, so we have x squared plus 15 squared equals r squared. And we also have um, 23 minus x squared plus 8 squared equals r squared. So they're equal to each other. So we get x squared plus 225 equals, and we multiply it out. And again, we get x squared minus 46x, that's the key, um, plus 23 squared plus the 64. Oh, it's getting so close to the edge. Can't even see. Let's zoom in a little. Oh, I can't. So the x squareds cancel. I'm going to move the x's to the side. 46x equals. I move this to the other side and I get 23 squared plus 64 minus 225. And then, oh, that was a 64. And then we get 46x equals. So 23 squared plus 64. I know what this is coming out to be, but it's so fun to do the suspense. And then we divide and we get x equals, so uh, 368 divided by 46, 8. And so if this is 8, now we can just go back and find this out. And oh, look at that. This is an 8, 15, 17 triangle, but you could solve it. So x was 8, but it wanted to know the radius. So the radius was 17. Cool problem. Okay, let's go down to the next one. Find x. Oh, that's easy peasy. This arc here is equal. The measure of the arc is equal to the central angle. So it's 94 degrees. And then the inscribed angle is equal to half of the intercepted arc. So x equals one half of 94 or 47. Okay, so 7 is 47 degrees. That was like a crazy complex problem and then followed by a super easy one. Okay, find the radius of a circle if each side of an inscribed square has eight. So we have this and square inscribed, and so that hits here, hits here, hits here. So we actually saw this picture already up here in 30, 60, 90, uh, where was it? Whoa, I skipped a page? What, how did that happen? I scrolled down so fast, I skipped a whole page. Okay, um, we'll all come back and record that. All right, um, well, too late finding it. I'll just solve it. Okay, so these are all eight and eight. It's a square, so it's a right triangle. Those sides are congruent, so this is 45, 45. 
So that's similar to 45, 45, and a right angle. So that's um, 1, 1, and root 2. They're similar. So that's just a multiple by 8. So the whole diameter then is 8 root 2. And so the radius equals diameter divided by 2. So radius equals 8 root 2 divided by 2 or 4 root 2. Okay, so 4 root 2. All right. Uh, in this triangle, so let's see, and then it's still chapter 10 after this. All right. So we got in circle O, OA and OB are radiuses. And, okay, so we got circle O, and here's an A, and here's a B, and here's O. It says the measure of angle BOA is 120, so that's a central angle. Tangents PA, so here's a PA, and PB, oh, here's PB, so they're both tangents. Um, so that's, they form right angles, if you remember tangents. And these two tangents are congruent. So the tangents PA and PB both have a length of 10 and 10, okay? Find the length of OA. All right, so we've got right angles. So we've got this shape. Um, I'm going to draw it up here where we have some room. So we've got this shape here where we have 120 degrees, and then we've got a 90. I should have drawn that angle a little bigger. Let's draw that angle a little bigger. So we've got 120 degrees, then we got a right angle, and then we got a right angle, and then they meet here. These are both 10 and 10. And so how are we going to find the length of this side x? Well, one way is we could just connect to this. And I mean, what shape do we even have here? These are congruent. So we actually have a kite here. And so we could know our properties of a kite, or we could just use trig. So we could, oh, 5%. We could cut this symmetrically in half. So here's an X. We could cut this this way. We get these are perpendicular because the diagonals of a kite are perpendicular. That also line of symmetry cuts this angle. So we get this is 60 and this is 60. Um, that makes this 30. That makes this 60. That makes this 30, 30, 60. And now we just have 30, 60, 90 triangles. And so in the top triangle, let's go, this is similar to across from the 60 is our root 3, across from the 30 is our 1, and this is 2. So that was just an easy multiple. We multiplied, multiplied that by 5. So that means this is a 5, and this is a 5 root 3. And then this triangle is similar to, we have a 5, a 60, a 30. This one is, well, why did I write a 5? We want our ratios. So this is a 1 across from 30, a root 3 across from 60, and a 2. So there's no easy multiple there. So let's just use proportions. We're looking for x. So we'll say x is to 2 as 5 is to root 3. And now I can just multiply by 2 on both sides. And I get x equals 10 over root 3. Or rationalizing the denominator, I get 10 root 3 over 3. So that's the radius of the circle. So find OA, that was OA equals 10 root 3 over 3. And I'll just draw an arrow saying we were doing um, this problem up there where there was room. Okay, we'll do these last two problems, and I'll hope my Apple Pencil lasts that long. Quadrilateral ABCD is circumscribed about O. So we have a circle O, and then we have a quadrilateral drawn around it where it's touching, if AB, okay, so AB is 7, and BC is 11, and CD is 8, okay, that's AB, C, D, um, find A to D. Okay, so we have these congruent parts here. So we have these two are congruent, these two are congruent, these three are congruent, and these four are congruent. And so what we need to do is say what piece is here and what piece is here. So then we can say, well, then they're here and here, and that's what AD is. Okay, so one way we could do this is we say, well, I don't know how much it's split. So let's call this X. Well, that means this is X. And that means this piece over here is the rest of the side. So 7 minus X. Well, it means this is 11 minus X here. 
which means it's the same as 11 minus x here because two tangents to a circle, right, are congruent. That's the thing we're using. And this is the leftover. So we go, this is 8 minus the 11 minus x portion or 8 minus 11 plus x or um, x minus 3, right? And so that means that this side here is x minus 3 long and this side here is 7 minus x long. And when we add those up, clever little thing, 7 minus x plus x minus 3, those cancel out the minus x plus x, and we get 7 minus 3 is 4. And so that whole side length then is 4. Very cool. Um, so AD is 4. That was a fun little thing that worked out. So AD is 4. And then find x in this picture. Uh, so in this picture, we have, let's call this y here. We know this random intersection here, 46, is equal to the average of x and y, so x plus y over 2. Or in other words, x plus y equals 92, just multiplying by 2. But then we also know 12 is the difference. So 12 is equal to x minus y divided by 2, or x minus y equals 24. Now two variables, two equations, right? That's the scenario where like we have this, and so x equals uh, b minus a over 2, and um, when we have a random intersection not at the center, that x is the two arcs divided by 2, it's the average. Those are the two scenarios. And then combining these, x plus y equals 92, and x minus y equals 24, we just add those, and the y's cancel, and we get 2x's equals 116, or x equals, uh, what, 55 and 358? There we go. So x is 58 with a little system of equations there. All right. All right, let's keep going. So for these questions, use circle D with some tangents, find GAF. Okay, so angle GAF is this angle right here. Um, well, that's just going to be, it's opening up to this arc and this arc. So angle GAF is equal to one half of big minus small or 70 minus 20. So that's one half of 50, or that's 25 degrees. All right, GMH, so erasing that, we get GMH. That's between a tangent and um, a chord. That's the same as an inscribed angle opening up to this arc. So all we need to do is find that arc, okay? Well, in this half circle, we have 20 plus 35 plus 70, and the missing piece add up to 180. So we go 180 minus 70 minus 35 minus 20, or that's minus, what, 105 minus 20. So 180 minus 125. That leaves us with 60, no, 55 degrees. Just double checking. That plus 35 is 90, and the 70 and the 20 is 90. Yeah. Okay, so that's 55 degrees. And then we have this angle opens up to this arc, so it's equal to 1 half of 55 plus 70, or 1 half of 125. So 1 half of 125, that's 62.5. Okay, let's clean up this picture again. Um, so now we're looking for A, E, M. So A to E to M. So we're looking for this angle here, A, E, M. Just double checking. So that's going to be the average of this arc and this arc. So that's equal to 1 half. 35 plus 70, or one half of 105, so that's 52.5 degrees. And then 15 is fine, BE. So let's erase all this. So we're looking for BE, just segment BE. That's not even a thing in our picture. Oh, it's from a different picture. <laughs> that's why. Okay, so for BE, hmm. So we're just looking at this segment thing. So we have piece times piece equals piece times piece. So we can count a lot of these lengths. So the horizontal is from 8 to 18. This is 10. From 18 to 24, this is 6. And then we have to use the Pythagorean theorem here. So the Pythagorean theorem is we went down 3 from 0 to negative 3. And we went over from 
Oh, I wrote that in the wrong spot. We went down three, and then we went over from 18 to 22 and over four. So this is five. So it's just piece times piece. So let's uh, call this length here. Yeah, BE. That's what we're looking for. So let's call it X. So we have piece times piece, five times X equals piece times piece, six times 10. I don't know why this says tricky. This is just divide by five, X equals 12 or BE equals 12. Okay, cool. Um, if CD is tangent to P, find X. So this is piece, outer piece times whole equals outer piece times whole. So the outer piece and the whole is just four times four. And then the outer piece times the whole is X times X plus six. Okay, so I'm gonna switch colors here. And so this is 16 equals X squared plus six X moving it all to one side where the x squared term is positive we get whoa that's a minus 16. so that's x box method first term stays the same last term stays the same multiplies to negative 16 that's a times c adds to positive 6 so that is a ne no positive 8 and negative 2 and so this is a positive 8x and a negative 2x so GCF is X, negative two, GCS is X and eight. All those products work out. So this is X plus eight times X minus two equals zero. So either X plus eight equals zero or X minus two equals zero. So X is negative eight or X is two. And so we go back over here and of course we have to have a positive segment length. So we can use the two and we can get rid of this one. And that's 2 times 8, which is equal to 4 times 4, 16. Okay, so the rest isn't for this course, but let's do it anyways. Okay, so again, these aren't for this course, but let's just do them anyways. All right, so find the coordinates of the points of intersection of the line blank and the circle. So this is kind of a hard problem, but the idea here is we just have a system of equations. I mean, there's multiple ways to do this problem but this is going to be an ugly system of equations. So let's just do it. So we want to find when this and this cross. So we just write them as like equation and equation. Now we're not going to be able to use elimination because we can't turn an X squared easily into an X. So probably we're going to use system of equations. Um, if it worked out nicely, we could maybe use graphing, but I never rely on graphing. So let's solve for either Y or X. Um, so we get 6Y equals, let's zoom in a little bit. 6y equals negative 5x plus 30. So y equals negative 5, 6x plus dividing by 6 on both sides plus 5. Okay. Just double checking my work. So we subtract the 5 divided by 6. Yep. All right. So now we plug this in over here. And this is where it gets sloppy. So we get this plus, and then we have to square this. Negative 5, 6x plus 5 squared equals 25. And so now we have to say, gosh darn, that's where they intersect. So let's solve that. So multiplying that out, we get x squared plus 25 over 36x squared. And then minus, what, that's 25 over 6, right? So that's negative 5, 6 times 5. And then two of them, so times 2. So that's times 10. So we get minus 56x. And then plus 5 times 5 is 25 equals 25. Well, luckily, we subtract the 25. And so this did actually get a lot easier. So now we have, this is 20, no, this is 36 over 36x squared plus 25 over 36x squared minus 50 over 6x equals 0. So combining those terms, what we get is... Uh, 36 and 51 is 50, 61. So we get 61 um, X over 36. Oh my gosh, I can't write and talk at the same time. So that's an X squared. Let me actually rewrite that a little bit. So we have that fraction, X squared minus 50 over 6 X. And so this is equal to zero. So the factoring is really easy. We're just going to factor out the common multiples or we could even just Anyways, I'm going to factor out. So it's X times 6136X minus 50 over 6. So either X equals 0 
or this equals zero. So for that to equal zero, it's 61 over 36 X equals um, 50 over six. So multiplying by 36, we get 61 X equals, uh, this cancels with this, we get six, so equals 300. So we get either X equals zero or X equals 300 over 61. And then we just need to plug those in and figure out the accompanying y value. So zero is really easy. We plug in zero here and y equals five. So one point is zero comma five. That's the nice one. The other point is not so nice. So x equals 300 over 61. And then we need to plug that in over here. So y equals negative five six times 300 over 61 and then plus five. So this would be canceling, that's 50. And so we get five times 50, so it'd be negative 250 over 61 plus, and then this is five times 61 over 61. In other words, 305. So adding those, we get a positive 55 over 61. So positive 55 over 61, or that's a round five comma one ballpark right no, we wouldn't actually like that's not the answer but like that's where it would be on a graph okay next one write the equation of a circle whose center is at this and whose tangent to the x-axis well that's easy because if we just do a graph here and we go to negative one two three negative two right there's our point and it says this tangent to the y-axis here's the y-axis that means its radius is because remember radius is perpendicular to there so its radius is just three. Oh, that's easy. So radius equals three. So we just go, the equation is x minus the x center squared plus y minus the y center squared equals radius squared. So that's x plus three squared plus y plus two squared equals nine. That was an easy one. Find the center and radius of a circle. Oh, so this one, we're just going to complete the square. So this would be x squared minus 12x, and we divide by 2 and square, so that's negative 6 squared, so plus 36, and we add 36 to the other side, okay? And then plus y squared plus 14y plus, so we divide by 2 is 7, and we square it, 49 completes the square, and then we just move this to the other side because it was just extra junk, so we have a minus 4, okay? So that one becomes... Um, x minus 6 squared. That was why we completed the square here. And then we completed the square here to be plus y plus 7 squared equals, and then this side over here is what? Uh, that's 70, 85 minus 4, so 81. Oh, that's nice, which is just a 9 squared. So the center here would be 6 comma negative 7 and radius equals 9. So 6, negative 7, and a radius of 9. All right, and then this one, graph this one. So the center is at 0, comma, negative 6, and the radius is 1. So we just go over here to 0, negative 6. So we just got to do a graph up top here so we can see it. So here's a, here's a graph. We go to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So here's my point at the center, and then the graph would be like this. There'd be, I mean, that's a terrible graph. It should be much better, but that's okay. All right. Then bonus, find the coordinates of the center of the circle containing this. So this is a cool problem. So the logic here is if you have a circle or parts of a circle and you want to find the center, um, all you do is take any chord and perpendicularly bisect it, and that will go through the center. Then you take any other chord, okay? and you perpendicularly bisect it, and that'll go through the center, and so where those two lines intersect is the center. That's the big picture. So let's erase this. All we need to do is find our perpendicular bisectors. So we have the point zero, zero, that's an easy one. Then we have negative one, two, and up one, two, three, four. And then we have um, one, two, three, four, and negative one, two, so kind of mirror images on the two sides. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, here's a chord and here's a chord, and I'm just going to perpendicularly bisect them. Actually, that's not true. I'm going to choose one of those two chords, 
And then I'm going to perpendicularly bisect this one because the symmetry, I think, is going to go right up on this line, which is an easy line. Okay, so first I'll perpendicularly bisect this one. Okay, so midpoint is, uh, you just take the average of those two. So with the midpoint is negative one, two. And then the slope, the original slope of this is we went rise four over run negative two. It's really easy subtraction when you have zero. So the slope was negative two. So our new perpendicular slope is positive one over two. All right, so we have a point for the perpendicular bisector and we have a slope for the perpendicular bisector. So we can write the equation of our first line. It's y equals, um, oh no, let's use point slope. So we have y minus two equals positive one half x minus negative one. All right, that's our first equation. Okay, that's our perpendicular bisector of those two points. Now in a separate color, let's perpendicular bisect these two. So the average is you add up the values. So the midpoint, you add up the values and divide by two. So you get two divided by it's one. You get positive two divided by two is one. And then the original slope was, and I'm going to go from this point to this point. So from four to negative two went down six. And from negative two to four, we went up six, so the slope was negative one. So our new perpendicular slope is positive one. All right, so the equation of our perpendicular bisector for that one is y minus, I'm gonna use, I don't know, this, oh, sorry. I'm gonna use the midpoint. We have a point and a slope. So y minus one equals slope of one times x minus one. Okay, so rearranging this, this is y minus 1 equals x minus 1, or in other words, y equals x. And then the other one rearranging is y minus 2 equals 1 half, and that's an x plus 1. So distributing 1 half x plus 1 half. And then we add the 2 to both sides, and so we get y equals 1 half x plus 5 halves, that's 2 and a half. All right, so now we just need to do a system of equations and see where our two perpendicular bisectors meet. I'm going to draw a line here that we're solving a separate problem. So where they meet is y equals x and y equals 1 half x plus 5 halves. So I'm just going to substitute this one into here and we get x equals 1 half x plus 5 halves. Or in other words, uh, let's multiply by 2. 2x two equals x plus 5 or x equals 5, and then we just plug that in, f, x equals 5, and it's on this line, so we must have the point 5, 5 is where the center is. So let's plug it in over here and just double check, 1 half 5 plus 5 halves, that would be 5 halves plus 5 halves, or 10 halves, or 5, and sure enough, 5 equals 5, check. So it's on both perpendicular bisectors. So the center of the circle would be at 5, 5. Cool problem. And let's stop the video there.